With the release of Modern Horizons, we here at Card Kingdom are giving out these nifty modern archetype stickers. However, we know that maybe not everyone's into modern quite yet. So if you want to rock some of these nifty stickers, but want to know more about the decks first, here's a quick intro to some of the archetypes. In this video, we're going to cover Tron and Death's Shadow. The entire idea behind Tron decks is to assemble the Urza Tron, Urza's Mine, Urza's Power Plant, and Urza's Tower, and then just keep casting huge haymakers until your opponent is just overwhelmed. First, we start with the setup. The goal is to assemble Tron as fast as you possibly can, and Tron comes packed with ways to do that. While the deck is, for the most part, colorless, most variants include green for access to Ancient Stirrings and Sylvan Scrying. Chromatic Star and Sphere help you cast those green spells and dig you a little deeper into your deck. Expedition Map rounds out the ways to search up Tron, and once you have it assembled, you can still use the map to search out your utility lands as needed. So, you have Tron assembled. Now what to do with all that mana? Well, it turns out there's a lot of real powerful colorless planeswalkers and big scary monsters you can cast in Modern. Karn Liberated is the poster child for the deck, with Ugin the Spirit Dragon not far behind. Both Karn and Ugin's newest versions from War of the Spark are showing up in recent Tron lists as well. Karn the Great Creator being a bit more popular than Ugin the Ineffable, for now. As for creatures, Wormcoil Engine is the go-to beater, with Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger and some version of Emrakul showing up to close out the game. Walking Ballista serves multiple purposes, helping to close out games or take out problematic creatures as needed. If you end up in trouble, Oblivion Stone can reset things in a pinch, sparing your best cards if you have the window to put fate counters on things. Most versions of Tron play some number of Relic of Progenitus mainboard as well. Even if your opponent isn't on a graveyard strategy, it can just draw a card when you need it. So that takes care of the main deck, now for the sideboard. Some of the more popular sideboard cards you'll find in Tron are things like Nature's Claim, Thrag Tusks, Surgical Extraction, Thought Not Seer, Trinospheres, Chalice of the Voids, and so on. There's a lot of sideboard options, it just depends on what you think you'll want for where you're playing. Grixis Shadow falls into an ancient and storied archetype within a larger genre of deck. Good ol' Suicide Aggro. The deck takes its name from the card Death Shadow, which is a 13-13 for... a single black mana? There is a slight drawback. It gets minus X minus X, where X is your life total. So you need to be at 12 life before you can even get it on the battlefield. For a long time, that was enough of a hurdle to keep the card from being too broken. Over time, however, the right combination of cards got printed to finally push the card over the edge. And for a while, it was one of the most dominating archetypes in the format. So, we have Death Shadow. What goes with it? Modern's land base of fetches and shocks are already conductive to the strategy, so it fits right in there. The land base alone can get you into shadow range by turn 3. But we need other stuff to do until then. We'll start out with most of our non-creature spells. Fatal Push helps keep the board clear along with Dismember, which also drives our life total down. Inquisition of Kozlek and Thoughtseize fight whatever tricks our opponent may have up their sleeve, with the added life loss from Thoughtseize helping out the Shadow plan. Mishra's Bobble essentially just thins out our deck for free and gives us a bit of information at the same time. Thought Scour gets us through our deck faster and as a bonus throws cards into our graveyard. Wait, why is that good? Because of the rest of our creature suite. Outside of Death's Shadow, Gurmag Angler is front and center, and this deck can cast the zombie fish right quick. Street Wraith does a little of everything, puts a card in our yard and draws us a card, with the two life cost actually helping us out. Snapcaster Mage lets us rebuy our spells we've thrown in the bin, and Jace Finn's Prodigy does much the same. The main goal is to land a quick angler or shadow and protect it long enough to kill the player across from you. And as those two creatures get big quick, Stubborn Denial does a very good job of protecting them, with Teamer Battle Rage being the nail in the coffin, allowing for an insane amount of damage real fast. The sideboard is a grab bag of good Grixis cards. Disdainful Stroke, Coligan's Command, Liliana the Last Hope, Abraid, Engineered Explosives, and so on. Grixis is a powerful color combination, so the right sideboard is going to switch up depending on your local meta, what else is popular at the moment, and so on. Obviously, these decks are going to be changed up over time as new cards come into the format, but the general idea will remain the same. So which of these decks do you like better? Which would win in a heads-up match? Let us know your thoughts down below. Thank you.